One of the most controversial figures in all of NFL media, Mike Florio, over at Pro Football Talk, is back with another set of NFL power rankings. This time, it's his training camp edition power rankings. And these power rankings always make waves on social media because they're always controversial. Michael Florio knows how to catch the attention of the NFL audience, and he's doing it once again with these set of power rankings, which I'm going to react to and let you know if they're great, phenomenal, if they suck, or if they're somewhere in between. And I definitely have some takes about these power rankings, just looking at them real quickly, that there are some teams that are way too low or some teams that are way too high. So I definitely disagree with many of the entries within these training camp edition 2024 NFL power rankings. If you like these reaction videos here on the bottom line view, Gronk spike the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to see my training camp edition power rankings where I rank all 32 teams and give you my reasoning, then let's get 100 likes on this video and I'll provide my new power rankings. Let's go, guys. Let's react to some Mike Florio. Let's go. So his power rankings, we're going to start at the bottom, beginning at number 32, begin with the Carolina Panthers, the worst team in the NFL last season, a team that I've said many times never led for the entire year in terms of they won two games, they won in field goal fashion, game-winning fashion in both games. Not meaning that they didn't lead for a portion of games, but you understand what I'm saying. They only won two games and they were both by game-winning field goal. They didn't win any decisive matchups. But that being said, I personally do not believe that the Panthers will be the worst team in the NFL this year. I definitely feel they're going to improve. They've improved the offensive line. Robert Hunt, Damian Lewis. They've improved wide receiver with Deontay Johnson and Xavier Leggett in the first round. They definitely have improved running back with Brooks out of Texas. They've actually added two Longhorns to the skill positions, tight end and running back. They've improved head coach, in my opinion, with Dave Canales, an offensive-minded, young, fresh vibe to combine with second-year quarterback Bryce Young, who I do think will slightly improve. I'm not a huge Bryce Young guy. I definitely would still have this team in the bottom five, but I feel like with the improvements they've made specifically to the offensive side of the football, they won't win only two games. I would expect four. I'd expect five. Somewhere better than two games, right? And there's a team on this list that is way too high that I think could be the worst team in the NFL. And once we get there, I will talk about them. But at number 32, I understand the Panthers being last because of how bad they were. But if you're actually trying to project who will be the worst team in the NFL, I personally don't think it will be Carolina. So Panthers fans, that's... Good, I think, right? I, I was pretty positive there. The second worst team in the NFL, according to the Italian Michael Florio. Shout out to my Italian brother there. The New England Patriots are the second worst team in the league. Now, this is where I have a problem. We're going to start off here. We've already got a problem, Mr. Florio. My Patriots are not the second worst team in the NFL, and I highly doubt they will be worse than last year. Let's just put it this way. The Patriots probably had the worst quarterback play in the NFL last year. That includes even Mac Jones, who I've always gone to bat with and for in terms of I felt like he didn't have enough help, which he didn't. He didn't, but he was bad objectively and he was broken objectively right this isn't subjective this is objective Bailey Zappi stinks he didn't even make the team at the beginning of the year and he was playing half the season by the end so to me like quarterback is definitely going to be better whether it's Jacoby Brissett or Drake May who I really believe in I think either one is going to improve that position so that is big number two I think the offensive coaching cannot get worse I really do feel that the new change in scheme, especially from an offensive line fundamental standpoint, is going to be better. I do feel like having Ramondre Stevenson healthy will help. Having Kendrick Bourne back will help. Having Demario da uh, Douglas, I almost said Davis, in year two is going to help. 
I feel like adding multiple rookie receivers is definitely going to add talent to this mix, okay? And I've already heard some good things coming out of mini camp and things like that. So I believe in Drake May, and I think if he starts, he raises the ceiling of this team. But I definitely feel like Jacoby raises the floor. And the other thing you're missing is this is a top five defense easily in the NFL. And on top of that, last year, they were an elite defense without having arguably their two most talented players, a pass rusher in Matt Judon and a corner in Christian Gonzalez. So they also get Marcus Jones back. They've got a ton of talent from Jabril Peppers and Kyle Duggar at safety to Christian Barmore up front. Like this defense is complete and they've got a lot of institutional knowledge on that defense. A lot of vets that have played in the system for a while, which means I'm not too concerned about losing Belichick on that side of the ball. I actually feel like Gerard Mayo's new, fresh, kind of like inspirational, positive approach might actually do well for this team this season. So I think the Patriots, don't get me wrong, are not going to be fantastic but they're not going to be picking in the top three this year because they're improved in a lot of areas and they cannot get as injured as they were last year. They had the most games lost on the defensive side of the football in the NFL last year, and they were still fantastic. So to me, like, they're not the second worst team in the league. There are teams that are worse, and we'll get to those teams once we get up this list a little bit. At number 30, the Cardinals feel a little bit low just because of the floor that having a talented quarterback like Kyler Murray gives you and provides for you, I will say that I am not a huge fan of the Cardinals this year. I definitely feel they are very susceptible on defense. They don't have marquee players in the secondary or the pass rush, but I do think they're going to score some points. I love Trey McBride. I love Marvin Harrison Jr. James Conner had one of his best seasons last year. I'd expect him to still play well this year. Plus, they drafted a young running back to add a little bit of flavor and speed behind him. The offensive line is low-key pretty darn good. And again, if Kyler is healthy and playing, they should be able to squeeze out about five to six games. So to me, like that is not in the range of top three pick in the NFL draft. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I certainly can see an argument, but I like guys on the offense. I like the the scheme on the offense. I do feel like the defense is well coordinated, even if it's not that talented. So overall, I do think that the Cardinals are going to be a little bit better than the 30th best team in football. Now the commanders and the giants at 29 and 28 are two teams that I would have ranked lower. I think both teams are pretty bad. I, I don't understand how you could objectively look at the commanders and suggest they're better than the Patriots. Like, honestly, I, I don't really see how they're better than the Patriots. Like, I would prefer Drake May over Jaden Daniels personally. I think the offensive line of New England is probably better than the commander's offensive line. I guess the commanders have better receivers, but that's about where it ends. I mean, the defense in New England is drastically better. So, I don't know. Like, I just don't really see how the commanders are a better football overall team, especially considering the quarterback play in Washington was a lot better than the quarterback play last year in New England. Like Sam Howell was pretty good, I felt like, in a number of games. He at least had those outings where he was really good. He did have games where he was really bad, but that kind of balanced itself out. So I don't know, man. I, I don't see how the commanders are better than the Patriots this year. So I would... Even the Cardinals. I think the Cardinals just have a better version of Jaden Daniels at quarterback and a better overall offense. And and I'm not a huge believer in, in Dan Quinn or Cliff Kingsbury. I think they're upgrades for the Commanders, but I don't necessarily love either one. I kind of prefer what the Cardinals have and the, the Patriots have and even the Panthers have to a certain degree at the coaching positions. So to me, I don't really find that rhythm there with the Commanders. And then the Giants are terrible. Like the Giants... <laughs> They're terrible. Like, Daniel Jones, it, I just don't like the vibe surrounding him. It feels like the team doesn't believe in him. The organization, the franchise has kind of given up on him after last year. I do like Brian Dayball. I do like the defensive coordinator. I do like the coordinators, the coaches. I do like that aspect of the team. But everything else, the offensive line is still not great, although it could be better. I mean, it should be better. It was a disaster last year. They do have improved offensive line coaching, but Saquon is gone. 
And, you know, Darren Waller, whatever, he has gone to. So two primary playmakers for the offense last year. Malik Neighbors will drastically help them. Explosive plays, that would be nice. But again, the offense is bottom five in the league. You couldn't really say it's head and shoulders above even uh, the Patriots offense. Like, it's really that bad, the Giants. So then you look at their defense, and they've got a good front seven with Dexter Lawrence and Brian Burns and Kayvon Thibodeau and Okereke. Uh, those guys are good. But in terms of the secondary, they might be the worst in the league. And they were a bad team last year, like a really bad team last year. So, yeah, I, I, I would have the Cardinals, the Patriots— above the Giants. I think the Panthers have more talent than the Giants, but I could understand why you might have the Giants ahead of them. So that's kind of where I stand with this. So I'm not a huge fan of this bottom five or six area. I definitely feel like there's a tier break once you get to Tennessee and the Raiders. I think that the Raiders and the Titans are teams that I think are slightly slept on that I could see some potential with those teams. Like, I think that the Titans have a very well-built offense, and it basically comes down to can Will Levis maximize it? Like, you've got D-Hop with Calvin Ridley, with some decent running backs there, a left tackle from the first round, a left guard from the first round, a top 10 center now, an improved play caller. The defense does have some nice little studs across Legereus Snead in the secondary, Jeff Simmons up front, Harold Landry. The linebackers are kind of weak. The safeties are a little suspect, but the corners are really good. The pass rush isn't bad. I could see how the Titans would definitely be tiers above the rest of the teams that are below. So not that I would move them too much higher, but I kind of believe in the Titans' potential maybe a little bit more here. The Raiders, I think, are actually in a better roster than many people think like they've got good receivers Devonte adams jacoby myers brock bowers i basically include as a receiver you've got michael Mayer entering year two offensive line i think solid with colton miller you add in the draft there and the running back position i'm not too worried about going from josh jacobs to zamir white especially the jacobs of last year i think the quarterback position is obviously one of the weaker ones in the nfl but the defense was low-key top half in the league last year and if anything they got drastically better because you add an elite player to the middle of their defense and christian wilkins so i think that the raiders could sneakily win about eight or nine games and i wouldn't be shocked which is why I'd have them higher. So now if I'm looking at the Titans and the Raiders, who would I have them above on this list? Well, let's just skip to number 22 in the Denver Broncos, who are easily the most miscast team in this entire power ranking so far. The Denver Broncos are terrible. They are terrible. They have no quarterback. They have three bad quarterbacks. They have an offensive line that I think is maybe slightly above average, which is one of the stronger units on their team. The running back position is below average. The wide receiver depth chart is below average. The tight end does not exist. Sean Payton, good coach, but he's not Sean Payton of 10 years ago, in my opinion. Vance Joseph, solid defensive coordinator, but he's no Bill Belichick, right? The defense, they lost Justin Simmons. The, the interior D-line is pretty good with Allen and John Franklin Myers, but the linebackers are okay. The edge rusher position, they have a lot of different mediocre players, but no dominant players. The corner position, you've got Pat Sertan, but again, like nothing really behind him that's substantial. So I just look at this team and I feel like the talent is extremely mediocre. If not, it's really bad. Like this is one of the worst rosters in the NFL. So to me, with a bad quarterback and a bad roster, that just makes for a bad team. This is a bottom five team in the NFL and they'll win most of their games because of their coaching, in my opinion. So yeah, the Broncos should be much lower. The Vikings are interesting. That is Florio's team. I feel like I like the Vikings. I like their coaches. I just don't know what they're going to get from the quarterback position. I'd probably have them around that range. That sounds about right. The Saints, I think some people would have them a little bit higher. I'd probably have them around this range too, so I, I don't disagree there. The one team that is drastically out of place is the New York Jets at number 25. Like, the Denver Broncos are at 22. Do the Denver Broncos have one single position that is better than the New York Jets at any position? Right, you go through the entire depth chart other than head coach, which is not a position, it's a coach, quarterback, Jets, running back, 
Jets. Wide receiver, Jets. Offensive line even is debatable. It's at least even with the improvements the Jets have made. Remember, they added two new tackles in Moses and Tyron Smith and a new guard in Simpson. So they're drastically improved. Plus, Elijah Vera Tucker is now healthy. So arguably, the Jets are better there, although it's debatable. Tight end, okay, probably pretty even. Defensively, the Jets are worlds better. So to have the Jets at number 25, despite the coaching differential, I mean, every other area is the Jets. Like, the Jets are one of the most talented teams in the NFL. To have them at number 25 is absolutely outrageous. It is screaming hatred, like screaming about Aaron Rodgers. So to me, that's just too much bias involved in a power ranking because they're better than the Saints. They're better than the Vikings. They're better than the Broncos, right? I could see a world where the Jags or the Seahawks are better than them, but I mean, to have teams like the Chargers, the Colts, the Bears, the Browns, the, you know, those teams drastically above, the Bucks drastically above the Jets is crazy. Like 10 spots above the Jets is insanity. So to me, that is way too low. Again, I'm not going to argue with the Saints. Not going to argue with the Vikings. The Broncos are way too high. Seattle, I think, is a little bit too low. I like Seattle this year. I'm a big Mike McDonald believer. I think he's going to drastically improve the defense. I think the defense on paper, not just coaching, but on paper is low-key better than people think. The defensive line has like a five-man rotation that I've recently fallen in love with from Draymond Jones. They added Jonathan Hankins to Byron Murphy from Texas, the best interior defensive lineman in football, or in the draft, I should say, now on the Seahawks. And then you've got Leonard Williams, who's a stud, and you've got Mafe with Nwosu back on the edges. Pretty good linebackers there as well uh, with Baker from Miami, I believe, and then Dodson from Buffalo, both pretty good players. Julian Love at safety, Witherspoon, who's a stud, uh, Woolen as well, so... That's a secondary, that's a team, that's a defense that I love. I love their skill positions on offense. I am a little bit worried about the offensive line, but with Kenneth Walker, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, Jackson Smith and Jigba, Noah Fant, Geno Smith playing quarterback, that's a team I, I could see making the playoffs. So them at number 21 is just too low for me. I think Jacksonville is maybe a tad low, although it's it's there they could really line up anywhere from about 16 to 20, and that's probably pretty fair. I do think Jacksonville is going to be better than Indy this year. I will say that. And the Colts are a couple spots too high, in my opinion. The Falcons, I think, are a hype machine that I think Florio has gotten a little bit, you know, probably pretty accurate, right? Like, I think they'll be in contention for a playoff spot, but I don't really necessarily believe that they're going to make it there, especially because I just think they're, they're, the way they're operating, the way they're ran is so incompetent. I just do not believe in their evaluations of many of their players, especially defensively. I think they stink. So yeah, like number 19 feels right. Number 17, the Bears have a lot of potential. That's one that's kind of debatable. I think their defense is a little overrated on paper. I think their coaching staff is fairly, I wouldn't even say average. I was going to say mid, I was going to say average, but they're definitely below average. I mean, if you compare them to the rest of the NFL, I definitely would have like, 70% of the league above them in terms of a coaching staff. I think that Caleb could be really good, but again, he's a rookie. I love their receivers. I think they've got a lot of skill on offense. The offensive line, I think, should improve. But again, would I have Jacksonville and Seattle above Chicago? Probably. Like, probably. I think Chicago would be a little bit lower on my list. Dallas at 16, that's that's a pretty good ranking. You know, I think some people would have them a little bit higher, a little bit lower. I think Dallas is probably a bit better than Pittsburgh. If I'm being honest, I definitely think the Chargers are way too high. Like the Chargers, yeah, Harbaugh, yeah, Herbert. But again, get past Harbaugh and Herbert. Like the offensive line, they've got two good tackles, you would think, with Joe Alt getting drafted there as a rookie, though. But Corey Lindsley's gone now in the middle of the O-line, and the middle of the O-line is pretty suspect, which is what Herbert needs to really protect him in that inside. The running back position is like men off the street from the Ravens. The tight end is like not good. Wide receiver position is not good. It's far below average. The defense is far below average from a talent standpoint. Khalil Mack is still there. Boza is constantly injured, though. The D-line is bad. The linebackers are bad. The secondary is mediocre. So to me, 
the Chargers are so overpriced, so overrated right now just because they added a big-name coach. Like, to me, they are not better than some of the teams already. They're not better than the Jets. They're not. They're, they just, they aren't. At number 14, the Pittsburgh Steelers. I can understand this ranking. I like what the Steelers have done this offseason. I think the O-line is going to be really, really awesome to watch with Arthur Smith calling plays, which I think is the biggest element to the improvement. I think that Matt Canada was so bad that Arthur Smith going there and being like a top half coordinator is going to really help them run the ball well, throw the ball well, stay in rhythm on offense. Russell Wilson should be better than Kenny Pickett for sure. And the defense I do really like. I think it's a top 10 unit. So I understand the Steelers. I just think you're a little bit dicey just because the quarterback position is way worse than pretty much every other team that is in this range other than probably the Browns. And the Browns are like loaded at every position. Like, honestly, comparing the Browns to the Jets, aren't they basically the same team except one has a better head coach? And like, but Rodgers should be better than Deshaun, right? You would think. So to me, like you have the Browns at 12, but you have the Jets at 25. They're like the same team to me. I don't really see how that is such a big difference. I don't know, like Deshaun Watson against Aaron Rodgers here, right? Are we talking about the same thing, the same Deshaun Watson? Number 13 for the Rams feels about right to me, although I, I think they're better than, uh, I think they're better than the Bucks. I would I would maybe like swap the Bucks and the Rams, or like just in terms of where they, I, I think the Rams are better Probably about right, but I, I would just have different teams in different orders here, which is why I need to make my own training camp power rankings. But I think the Rams are maybe a smidgen low, but the Bucks are a, like too high. Them being in the top 10 is, is pretty wild. Like they don't have an elite quarterback. They don't have an elite offense. They don't have an elite defense and they don't have an elite head coach. So what puts them in the top 10? Like I love the Bucks. Don't get me wrong. I'm going to cheer for them this year again, but they're like... They're, they were a good story last year, and they, they had nine wins, okay? They, they weren't, like, an amazing team, right? They, they lucked into an extremely great matchup against the Eagles, and they, they destroyed them. That was fantastic, but let's not, like, say that they're a top-10 team now. Like, Miami, the Rams, the Browns, the Steelers, the Cowboys, those teams, the Jets— are all, I would say, more talented, probably better than the Bucks. But the Bucks are like in that middle range. They're like more closer to the Bears, the Jags, the Seahawks, the Falcons, in that range of teams, the Steelers. I think they're in that range, not the top 10. Um, Miami, I think's right. The Texans are way too low at number 10, like way too low. They should be in the top five or the top, you know, like at the very least, even if you're low on the Texans, they should be in the top seven. Like the Texans have a top quarterback. The Texans have a top receiver depth chart in the league. They're, they have a very good tight end, a very good running back. They have an excellent young head coach. They have a good play caller. They have a really good pass rush. They have a cornerback number one. They have good safeties. They have good linebackers. They have a combination of everything you would want to be an elite team. The only reason they're at 10 is because they have the logo, the Texans. If they swapped with the Cowboys, everybody would have the Texans in the top five. So the Texans are way too low. The Bengals are also too low, I would say. Just because if Joe Burrow is healthy, they're a top five team in the NFL, and we've seen no different since Joe Burrow's rookie season. Every year that Joe Burrow has actually played, besides his rookie year, they are a top three team in the NFL. Not even top five, but like top three. So, yeah, they're in the top five for me. I think they've got pretty much the same core on defense, except they've improved safety. They've, been, they've improved certain aspects of that defense in terms of their depth on the D-line and things like that. I think the O-line is better with Trent Brown being added and also a first-round pick and Amarius Mims being added. I think tight ends improved with Mike Gusecki. I think receiver has gotten more depth, actually. Uh, so, yeah, I think the Bengals are hungry and they are going to bounce back in a big way. I'd certainly have them above Buffalo. I understand the Josh Allen effect, and I think Sean McDermott runs a good ship on defense for the most part, but I would have the Bills probably in the top 10, certainly above the Bucks. but I don't think that they're deserving to be ahead of the Texans or the Bengals. The, the talent gap between those teams is pretty substantial, despite Josh Allen still being a premier quarterback. At number six, I can respect the Packers' ranking. I think they're in the right range. At number five, the Eagles. 
I don't really believe in them at the same rate here as Florio does, but I could understand it. Like, they're very talented. Um, they, they've got a really good offensive line, a really good receiving core. They've got pieces to a good pass rush, pieces to a good secondary. So there's a lot of things to like there. The, the coordinators are improved. I, I can't stand Nick Sirianni, though. So, and I do think Jalen Hurts is a little bit overrated. I'm just going to be honest. But, yeah, I would have them a little bit lower, perhaps. But the Ravens, I think, are a little bit too high. But I, I understand, again, like Harbaugh and Lamar, I think the defense is still really good. I think the weapons are top tier for Lamar's career in terms of Mark Andrews, Zay Flowers, and Derrick Henry, that kind of, and Isaiah Likely you could throw in there. Those kind of four guys are like as good as it gets for Lamar, but the O-line is shakier. No Mike McDonald. I've moved them down. I certainly have them below the Bengals and the Texans this year. So I'd move them a, a down a little bit, but they'd still be in my top 10. Number three, the Lions, I think is probably pretty accurate. They'd be in my top five for sure. Number two, the Niners totally get that. And then number one, the Chiefs totally get that. So I have no real problems with the top three. But the rest of the list, I think, is pretty dicey, especially some of the the rankings. Like, I think the Bengals and Texans are drastically underrated. I think the Jets are the most egregious ranking I've seen in any power ranking so far this offseason. I think the Broncos are one of the worst teams in the league, and they're about 10 spots too high. I think that there are certain things I don't like, like this Chargers are way too high. The, te the Bucks are way too high. But... There are, there are certain things I like about it too. So yeah, th that's my opinion on Mr. Florio's power rankings, his pre-training camp power rankings for 2024. 100 Gronk Spikes to the like button. I will provide my power rankings for the preseason, for the pre-training camp edition, and see where I land in terms of if you guys like my list. But until then, Gronk Spike the like button, subscribe, and I'll be back soon. Peace.